My daddy, I can remember working for $1 a day. Did you hear me? Daddy worked for a dollar a day. Somebody say R. Give me an R. All right. Now, is there anybody here who worked for a dollar a day? No. Would you work? You can take a dollar. Yes, sir. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Some people have some questions about you. That's a joke. All right. Now, what I want to, what I want to say is this. Would you work for $10 a day? Ten dollars a day? I didn't say an hour. The garbage man in New York make thirty-two dollars an hour. Are you following me? Daddy makes a dollar a day. We're in inflation. It's going to get worse. Did you hear me? It cannot get better. I know that that guy. What's his name? Uh, Greenspan has done a good job mitigate it, but he can't mitigate it forever. It has to catch up. It has to catch up, and the inflation will just hit the wipe out the money systems. That means if I had money right now, I would trade money for stock. Never bond. Are you hearing me? Yeah. For when I had stock, instead of cash, at least I owned something. Did you understand me? Stock is ownership, percentage of ownership. A bond, it, it'll be a worthless instrument soon. I hope you heard. And so, uh, I was called upon one time to to uh, help a widow and the guys, what they call the investment counselors. And he showed me the portfolio. He said, what do you think this revenue bond? I said, we agree with you, uh, and we do not challenge any of your formulas. We think you're right. But theologically, we cannot approve of the bonds. And he said to me, Remember, Nico, why can't you approve the bonds in this portfolio? And I said, Well, you know, I, I don't challenge that. I believe they're probably right, but we cannot approve. He said, Why? I looked him right into brown eyes and I said, You know what Moses told us. His name was Chicago. He jumped back. <laughs> And he folded up all the papers on the desk and said, come back next week. <laughs> next week, he came back with a complete new portfolio for this woman. And he had made a portfolio so much better of high yield, of high yield, uh, what do you call them, utilities in the, in the Wisconsin type states, the real secure, real secure. I know that he pull the formula out that he did for his money. And why did he do that? Because I said, you know what Moses told us, Mr. Chicago. He was a Jew. Did you understand what I just said? And you didn't catch that, so I'll say it again. Your investment counselors have a number of formulas that they use according to what they think you need. That went over like a lead balloon, so I think I'll talk about something else. Oh my, let's go on. They brought the willows, the brood, the, the boughs, the leafy, goodly trees, a piece of tabernacles, which by the way is very close to our Thanksgiving. It's a festival like a picnic for the children. It's a fun time. But there's something I want you to write down now. Tell the name of gathering of all the nations is in Numbers 29, starting with 12 to 38. And on the first day, you're to sacrifice 13 bulls. On the second day, 12. On the second, third day, 11. On the it says there are 70 bullocks. The reason this is important is this. The Jews say there are 70 nations. According to all prophets, all, all prophecy, the world will have 70 nations. Right now, the uh, UN has 170. But... Uh, According to the prophecy, it would be 70. And there was one bullock for every nation. Now, why is this important? If you can get a Jew and talk to him about the Feast of Tabernacles, then he will have to admit that all that he sacrifices for us. Did you get that? He 
sacrifice of not only for the sins of Israel, but in this case for all of the nations. And when you get him to admit that, you got a friend. Then they send the scapegoat out. You remember they take the two goats and they sacrifice the one and put their hands on the other? The word for the scapegoat is A Z A Z E L. That's his old father's one. Some people would call the name of the goat. Some people say it's the name of the place where the goat is sent. But some people say it's the name of the spirit or the demon or even Satan himself. So that's the place where you find that uh, tradition. Now remember I was studying all this and studying Satan when God showed me where I'd missed out on Pergamos all that time, all these years. I knew that it had to do some of the money, but I couldn't find it in there it was. Right there. It was the mint, the capital, the mint capital in the world of heaven. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Now this next chart is not about peace, it's about festivals. There are seven festivals. If you're not hearing carefully, you'll get mixed up. We have the seven feasts, and the seven feasts repeat every year. Did you hear me? The feasts repeat every year. Once a year, you'll have all those. The festivals, some repeat every seven years, some repeat every 50 years, some every week, and on and on it goes. The weekly Sabbath, you'll notice, was not in the seven feasts, for it's a festival, not a feast. It's a minor thing, but it becomes a major thing when you study deep prophecy. Are you hearing me? With deep prophecy, you're going to have to see the difference. You rest from your labor, you double the morning and evening sacrifices, and you put new bread on the only place. Then, for one of my jokes, I talk about the showbread that's removed. The showbread is then eaten by the priest. You remember that? And so then we talk about the showbread. And the showbread is fine ground flour mingled with oil and covered with cinnamon. How many likes cinnamon toast or cinnamon bread? How many eat cinnamon bread or cinnamon toast? That, that's it. Come on, put your hands up higher, you sinners. <laughs> See, only a priest can eat that. Only a priest can eat cinnamon bread. <laughs> well, I called you, uh, what? What did I call you? The royal priesthood. And had all the scriptures about it. So I'm going to say it again this way on this convention. You have a right to cinnamon bread. Amen. Now turn to the one next to you and say, You have a right to cinnamon bread. Tell me. You have a right to cinnamon bread. In the Old Testament, we find something about the new moon, and it's confusing. It's a small feast at first, but it turns into a full festival later on. After they returned from Babylon, it was a full festival. The new moon. How many have heard about how they established the new moon? How the Jews did that? See? The moon cycle is 28 days to so many and all that kind of stuff. You never know when the next month is going to start. It starts with the new moon. So they had guys on roofs of buildings with uh, sights like this. And when they, let's see, well, how was that? When the sun and the moon, tell me how they did. When they could see the new moon, when they could first see the new moon, that was the first day. The Feast of Trumpets, that's another one. It's called the Seventh New Moon. Let's do that again. The Feast of Trumpets is on the Seventh New Moon. It's the seventh month. And on the seventh month, called the month of Tishri, you've heard me say that. On the first of Tishri uh, was the rest. The tenth was the Day of Atonement. Fifteenth was the start of the Feast of Booths and Tabernacles. That lasted for some places seven days, eight days, nine days. 
they argue about how long it lasts. In fact, even the Jews of today have added another day because when it's one day in Jerusalem, it's another day in Australia. So to make sure they get them all, they just keep the festival going. And it's now a 23-day festival because they like it. Over here, it's joyous. We had a sabbatical year. That's the one that Daniel learned about. That was every seven years. Then you're, you're to let the land lie fallow. You, the spontaneous growth that was in the fields was for the poor people. All deaths were canceled. I won't say that again. In sabbatical year, all deaths are canceled. The law was read to the men, women, and children. When I say women and children, I'm going to say it again. But when I say the law was read to the men and the women, Children. When I say women and children, I want you to go like this. In shock. You ready? And the law was read to the men and the women and the children and the going in nations. They all had to hear it. Okay. Uh, we'll go on to deaths. Some more on that. That's time to talk. Now, the 70th year of rest provided the input. Into the formula in Daniel. Write this down. Yeah, the 92, write this down. 2 Chronicles 36, 21. Now Daniel said, I've determined from reading the scriptures the number of years when we should be in captivity. Did you hear me? Yeah. You see, sometimes a prophet gives a prophecy and doesn't know what is prophesying. That's right. That's right. But it takes a prophet to understand a prophet. I'm going to do that again. Yeah. Sometimes a prophet has to read a prophet, and the second prophet will understand what the first prophet wrote. Did you hear that? Daniel understood what Jeremiah wrote. Jeremiah didn't understand it, but Daniel did. Oh, hear that, friends. Hear, hear that. Yeah, hear. Uh, that process. The prophet doesn't have to interpret his prophecy. Over here. Daniel did. And he said it was 70 years. He found out it was 490 years that the land had not enjoyed her Sabbath. Remember that? I told you that he didn't keep these things. These things. So he went up to the king and said, Oh, King Cyrus, live forever. Time for us to Jews to go home. He said, What do you mean? He said, We've been captive 70 years. He said, So what? Then he took them back to Isaiah. And do you know Isaiah called Cyrus by name? Yep. Yeah. They took that thing out, Cyrus read right it, and said, Hey, focus my glasses. Look at that. This thing's over 200 years old, and it's my name. It says it's going to be. It says, This right here that I'm going to be the, the, the chief honcho over in Babylon. 200 years before God was born. And it says, I'm going to let the Jews go back to Jerusalem. That settles it. Go on. <laughs> How many know I just gave you a quick rendition of a long Bible story? That's, that's what happened. And he went back. There was a fellow just recently who wanted the name Cyrus. He took the name Cyrus so fast. The word Cyrus means Korish. And he took the name David Corey's his name was Vernon Howell, because he wanted to be Cyrus. He did not understand. Yes. He didn't understand what's, what's going on there. But he studied all these scriptures. Are you hearing me? Yes. I'm going to leave that, leave that going. You can stop me anywhere along the line if you want. Because I've got to finish. Now we have the last three of the festival. The Jubilee. That's the one we're expecting. Maybe this one this um, fall. It, uh, this next sentence may be important to you, but it might explain to you why different authors set different dates for the Feast of Passover. Now read this sentence carefully. The first Jubilee was the 64th year after the Jews came into Canaan. Why? Well, it took seven years to conquer Canaan and seven more years to distribute it. So you have to have seven and seven. It's 14 after 50 and 64. Jews are very, very careful when they count. Our guys count from the day that Joshua, the son of Nun, led them into 
the promised land and start counting by 50s. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So on and on it goes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain some to you. I'm trying to be the devil's advocate in this case for the guys who have made mistakes and tell you there's a good reason for a lot of mistakes in trying to figure this out. Are you hearing me? So I would like to treat these fellows with kid gloves and not be ugly toward these guys who have been studying this of late and fixing dates of late. You know what I'm saying? Because, honey, this thing is crammed back full of exceptions. And there's one of them right there. And another one, too. Got to blow the trumpet. You rest with the saw. The reversion of the property. That's very important. All property goes back to its original family owners. And that, that property could only be sold, or was at least, for 50 years. You got the idea of 50 years. Is. The Jubilee has never been kept by Israel. The Bible is crammed back full of rules about keeping them.
well, it's a moral, it's an ethical principle that I have to, I couldn't walk out of that. I have to make sure that this, that we're fully taken care of all of it. All right. So I began to study this and found out, oh, we're not, we've never had that before. Did you get that? If you don't believe me, then go to Philadelphia. Look at the Liberty Bell. You got it. You got it. Cracked the first time in Langan. It says right on the Liberty Bell, proclaim liberty to the captives, taken right out of the right out of the Bible and right out of the Jubilee Scriptures. The Liberty Bell is taken out of the Jubilee Scriptures and it's cracked. Why? Because we don't have it. Yes. Freedom from slavery. We've got some people in our audience tonight who have dealt with this word very heavily. Slavery. Freedom from slavery. Well, there's a physical slavery and there's a mental slavery. That's right. That's right. And some people are slaves and don't even know it. Okay. Now, if you were in chains, you'd know it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I want to tell you, that lady who's chained to that $300,000 payment plan is chained. That's right. It's chained. And let me tell you something. If she tries to wiggle out of it, she'll find Based on the Daniel formula, many have tried to fix the date for the 70th Jubilee is the time of release. And the books I've read, you can take it from 1979 to 2004. Several authors have picked this year, and they had reasonable reasons for the deductions. I'll do that again. There are good reasons for believing that the Jubilee starts in 1998. If it does, I can tell you absolutely it's the failure of the money system. If it is the failure of the money system, then my recommendation is to get out of it. How do you get out of it? You buy things. Don't loan money to anybody. Did you catch that? You loan money to people, the bonds, or any other uh, instrument, then what they pay you back will be worth nothing. Purchase power. You understand what I said? The purchase power, what you get back, won't be worth anything. So the answer is buy. Buy. Buy everything you can afford. Buy everything you can. Get a mortgage on it. Get a mortgage on it. You didn't catch that. Yep. 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 In 1960, wait, I forget, 64, I think, I bought my $20,000 house. Payments were $95 a month. Uh. <laughs> the insurance company just sent me a favor, it's worth $175,000 right now. Now, is my house any more valuable today than it was the day I bought it? No, no. No. Older. The value of the money is less. That's right. Are you hearing this? Yes, yes. The money is worth less. My house is worth a bit more than it was. It takes more money to buy it. Because money has deflated in value. Yeah. We're in inflation. Are you hearing me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then, now hear this, it's going to be hard on some of you. So then, inflation is good for people in debt. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's the government that keeps scaring us of inflation. Right. Why? Because the most of us are in debt. So the government tells you how bad inflation is. But when you study it, as I've studied it, I've seen that it has increased my wealth. Are you angry? Inflation has been good for me. I started out as a sailor, got married, had kids, bought a little house. What else could I do? Mortgaged it to the hell, right? Didn't wait, come on. We come on, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all did. One way or the other. My story's no different than yours. Now your house is worth a whole lot more money, but it's not worth a dime of value more than the day you bought it. Come on. Yeah, that's right. 
same number of bathrooms, same number of lights. You know what I'm talking about. I think I'm getting the point across. Okay. Now you can take your pick. See that word right there? Take your pick. Because you can have all this you want. I have chosen to believe that by the end of this year, my mortgage will be fully paid off. If I didn't have a mortgage, I'd go out and get one. If I was driving an old rattle trap, I'd call that guy who's been advertising on television, and I'd say I want one of those 125 percent. Watch those words, boy. <laughs> I'd go down, now it used to be I'd go down to the Cadillac place, I might go to the Lincoln place, no, I'm not quite sure. And I'd say, tell him, give me one of the big ones. I want a big one. And I'd get everything I could on bottom of them, as far as much as possible, because it's going to be so easy. My daddy took me aside when I was a little boy and he said, son, I want you to see this. And he said, this is a $20 bill. Now, no e-ball has ever carried a $20 bill. And he showed me five $20 bills. He wanted to impress me, the little boy, that we were secure financially. With five $20 bills. Could you impress your children with $520 a day? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much. My father was impressed. Do you hear me? Uh -huh. He was thanking the Lord for $520 bills. Now it's happened that fast in one generation, and people are saying it can't be. It can't be. It can't happen. It has already happened. Do you hear me? It's already done. It's already here. We've got people here who did work for five dollars a day. Let me see. Anybody work? I used to get thirty-two dollars a week right after the war. What was that? Eight, eight forty. A little less than eight dollars a day. That's why I jumped the name. But uh, it's got it's one generation. Do you hear me? Generation, my me, me, well, seven or eight, and that was not good money. But it was a job. I'm ready for the feast of dedication because that's something that you're going to like. The feast of dedication is the feast of lights. Now it's not in the Bible; it's the Maccabees, and you know Maccabees is the uh, prophet of the All right. It's on the 25th of Chislu, which Chislu is December. I don't know if you didn't catch that. You didn't catch that? Yeah. I said the Feast of Lights is on the 25th of Chislu. And during the Feast of Lights, you're supposed to put up bright lights. And you're supposed to put a, 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 a tree in, in the room and put these bright lights on this tree. And you're supposed to send presents one to another. Come on, honey. Merry Christmas. Even the Gentiles are keeping it. <laughs> the Jews don't keep it. I mean, till lately, till till late. We've been keeping it for them. It's joyous, exuberant. I read that word. I could not believe it. Now my boss attended. The Feast of Dedication. And they know what? Because it says that it was cold. Remember that? It was winter. It was in the winter. That tells you right there. In John 10, 22. I told you about my boss. And I saw a fellow the other day and he had a thing on his uh, bumper sticker and it said, My boss is a Jewish carpenter. 
Have you seen that bumper sticker?